welcome, welcome. <clears throat> I, I didn't really, are we, are we live? I didn't get warmed up yet. I forget how it goes now. Anyhow, good to see you tonight. That, if you weren't here Sunday night, then you wouldn't understand the fun of that. George Klein, I love you so dearly, right? What a, what a, what a fun time we had Sunday night. Anyhow. Hopefully you're with us now. I want to start off with two songs that I, uh, we sang as a, you know, oh my goodness, my teenage years. This is where I learned these songs, driving, like, the youth group, driving to activities. We'd sing these songs. It only takes a spark.
Jesus, I give you my heart and my soul. I know that without you, I'd never be whole. Savior, you've opened all the bright doors. So I thank you, I praise you from earth's humble shores. Take You are here, 
meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. first right mm -hmm. we're going to swing around now for some exciting trivia the points are just getting higher and higher with mm -hmm. pastor greg over there all right how you doing pastor greg swell doing swell well let's just swell hey everybody Welcome. You didn't, we, uh, you didn't do the trivia theme song. You keep forgetting. That's that. right. I keep doing it. Um, um, um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part of the week. Yes, Sunday we did. Night. Sunday night. Because George has such a great sense of humor. <laughs> we, we were able to enjoy that. <laughs> All right, folks. Got some trivia here. This is where the, uh, the rules are made up and the points don't matter. So, tonight <laughs> we're going to do number trivia. Numbers in the Bible. Mm. All right, so it's Bible trivia, but this, all the answers are going to be a number, a numeral. All right, so first question, start out. I think it's a fairly easy one, but Old Testament question. How many cherubim were on the mercy seat, or, or what would also be called the cover of the Ark of the Covenant? How many cherubim were on the mercy seat, the cover of the Ark of the Covenant? They were... Made out of gold and part of that cover, which we call the mercy seat. How many were there? Oh, Grandma McDonald jumped in. <laughs> Early answer. She's, 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 she's remote this week, right? She's not here. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, she's down in uh, no, I, Baton Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a lot of correct answers coming in. Yes, most people are getting that one right. There were two, two cherubim. They actually had their uh, their wings covering their face, and they were facing each other on the uh, the mercy seat. You find that in Exodus chapter twenty five, verse seventeen. If you want to look that up. All right, the next one. This is a 
Um, this one's a little bit harder. Um, now we're going to talk about Noah. Last week I threw a trick question there mm -hmm. about Noah and the ark, and I, I said Moses and the ark, and I ended up, I was so clever I fooled myself because I forgot that Moses had actually uh, was ordered to craft, uh, to find the, the crafters of the trick ark questions. of the covenant. I don't know. Back to my That's how tricky it was. I tricked myself. Um, it isn't that hard to do. But on the ark, the actual ark that Noah built, God commanded Noah to take onto the ark how many pairs of clean animals? Now, there's, mm -hmm. there's a distinction in the Bible between mm -hmm. unclean and clean. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Sunday school picture or a little, you know, in nurseries and stuff like that, you always see a certain number. But how many pairs of clean animals did God mm -hmm. command Noah to take onto the ark? I see Mike Mullen jumped in with an answer. My <laughs> man, Mike is quick. Joy. Christine Entwistle. Mm. Everybody's coming in with uh, with answers. Nancy McDonald. Most people are getting it right. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Good, good, good job, everybody. Yeah. That was a tougher question. And that is found in Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. Yeah. But yes, God just commanded Noah mm -hmm. to take seven pairs of clean animals and also the birds of the air, seven pairs of each of those as well. Most people here, you know, two by two, they came on the ark, and that's true, but there's just, there were seven of the clean animals. All right, next question. Uh, on the days of creation, which day of creation, the original creation in Genesis chapter 1, which day did God create the sun, the moon, and the stars? Which day did that take place? Sun, moon, and the moon, and Jupiter. That's it. Just a song, but not in there. All right. I think that's right. Greta McDonald jumping in early, taking advantage of we here got, the question. We've got several different answers. The fourth, oh, maybe fourth on Greta, third. second by Laura, third by Mike Mullen. Was it? So we got Two, third. Four. We got there's good there's you know Two. it's not a it's a, it's a was the yes. More, well, we were we were having Lots more thirds, thirds coming in. Now we got a lot, a lot of twos, twos coming in. People must have looked it up. Let's the see. The correct that. answer is up there. I'm just, I, it's one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that hard to look up. It's in Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen. Actually, nineteen is the one right. the day, but it tells us about the creation. Yes, it was the fourth was day the fourth of creation day. that the Ooh. sun, the moon, and the stars uh, were created. Which is interesting because on the very first day. God said, let there be light, which is interesting that there were no light givers, but God still created light. I always found that interesting. Now, it's, do, you teach, do, you, do you teach the three-year-olds that? Mm -hmm. See, so for 20 years, she's been teaching the, the preschoolers what day of creation. So, well done, honey. You're talking to her all the way down Baton Rouge. That's good. <laughs> 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 all right. So, you got that one right? Give yourself... I didn't give out points for the first two because I got distracted. But give yourself 4,000 points for the fourth day of creation if you got that right. Yeah, so we got, got it wrong. Read it. Genesis chapter Nancy 1. Nancy got it right. Yes, and, uh, lots of right answers. Mark. Mark Ellerson. Mark Ellerson. Yeah. All right, next question. How many times did Jesus tell Peter we needed to forgive a brother who sins against us? Peter asked, Lord, should I forgive him this many times? And Jesus said, Peter, no, not that many times, but... This number, right? Now, this one I found is a little tricky, too. Not so much tricky, but okay. there's a couple different versions that, that don't have the same answer that, that most of the other versions do. Laura LaFleur jumped mm -hmm. in on that one. Yes. Nancy McDonald, Bill Faber, everybody's jumping on it. I see nothing but correct answers up there. Linda Romowski. Yes, everyone is getting it. Yes, that is very good. And it's Jesus said, Peter said, Lord, should I forgive my brother seven times? And the Lord said, Peter, no, not seven times, but until 70 times seven. Um, which, if you do the math on that, that does equal 490. There's a couple versions. The NIV and the ESV say 77. And I'm not sure why they do that. I was trying to figure out where the discrepancy They say 77? 70, no, but they say 77, like 77. Um, so I'm not sure where they got that, but 70 times 7, and actually, I personally think Jesus is referring not to a number, but to the idea of 
Daniel, in his book, talked about the 70 weeks and Jesus would return at the, the end of the 70 times 7. I, I think Jesus, when he said until, because it's very specific, in the King James, he says until 7 times 7, we need to forgive until Jesus comes back and makes us all right with him. So, you got that one right? Give yourself 490,000 points. <laughs> Is, there you uh, go. That's, 70 that's, times. That's right. Yeah, right. Seven times 10. What? 70 <laughs> times 7 times 10 is 490. Oh, no, right, wait, right, no, wait, right, wait, right. no, wait. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. We'll seven get back to that. Seven is <laughs> well, Pastor Vince does some arithmetic. We'll I'll go on to the next question. Wait, no, no. I, 50 times 100,000? No. 490. Oh, 100,000. I'm sorry. 70 times 7 times 100,000. Never mind. Jeez, we feel good with that. There we go. All right, in the Gospels, Jesus raises um, some folks from the dead. How many people did Jesus physically raise from the dead while he was on earth, right? It's recorded in the Gospels. How many people did Jesus raise from the dead? And it's supposed to be a numbers-based uh, quiz, but I'll give bonus extra credit if you can name who they are. So how many of the people raised the Jesus Raised from the dead. Now, I'm not including himself. Oh, okay. okay so I'm not, well, not trying to be tricky yeah. here. All right? Uh, three individuals, not Jesus, that Jesus himself raised from the dead. Not including himself. Did you say how many? You just gave the answer. <laughs> I did? Beside himself. <laughs> no. He just gave the number of individuals. But fortunately, several of them. Have, Already got you it. Just said, I didn't hear myself say You it. just said the three individuals that Jesus <laughs> raised from the dead. I'll play it back for you right now. I'll make sure I get the points. <laughs> you threw me all off with your math. <laughs> but once you said it, a lot of threes well, started coming up. Well, that's good. I'm glad I could help. Yes, there were three <laughs> individuals that Jesus uh, had the power and he spoke the words to. And they, they came a lot of A couple again. of them had it early. Mike uh, Collin had three early. Does and anybody Roma? know um, who they are? Karen Brown has a little girl, I think she meant to say Talitha. Talitha. That's what it says in the, it's the daughter of Jairus was one. But um, Tabitha Lazarus, was on the Lazarus Lazarus floor. floor. Um, yes, I think she tried to write Jairus there too. And then the, the widow of Nain, um, neither her or her son is named, oh, right. but the widow of Nain had a son. Right. And Jesus raised him from the dead. Jairus' his daughter uh, told us he was, she was 12 years old. Then Wait, Lazarus. Oh, Jairus's daughter, the Talitha. Okay, they're the same person. Yes. <laughs> um. So yes, yeah, spell check sometimes gets a, gets the better of us, Laura. I know. So that's that were the three, and you can look that up in John chapter ten. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong. John eleven for Lazarus, um, Luke seven for the widow of Nain, and Mark chapter five for. Jairus' daughter. Um, okay. I got two more questions. Good. All right. So this one, this one's a tough one. All right. And David, when he went out to meet Goliath, it says he stopped by the brook to pick up some smooth stones from the brook. Mm -hmm. How many stones did David take out of the brook and put into his shepherd's pouch to go and face Goliath? How many smooth stones did David take and put in his pouch to go out and face Goliath? Mm -hmm. Mullen jumped on that. Some people said three. You got some people saying five. There's guys are going back and forth. There's a battle between three and five right now. Jody Gravener is uh, is concerned about the wig thought somewhere. Is there a wig somewhere? <laughs> Cousin it. <laughs> and you didn't call it Cousin Greg. Exactly. All right. The majority is coming in with the correct answer. Yes. Five, five smooth stones okay. David picked up, and that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 17. Interesting about that, it only took one, right? David had confidence in God, he only had the one shot, but we find out if you want to look in 2 Samuel 21, it looks like Goliath may have had four brothers. Um, so I don't know if David was expecting them to come out after him next, or if he just had an intention, but all of those, uh, they were his brothers, cousins, sons, they were somehow related to the giant in Gath. There were five of them all together. And they all end up being slain 
by the Israelites in one point or another. But five stones in his pouch. That is correct. Um, all right, last question. We have uh, the oldest man recorded in the Bible. His name is Methuselah. How old was he when he died? How old was Methuselah when he died? How many years did he uh, live on this earth before he died? So Methuselah is the oldest man recorded in Scripture that we have his age. How old was he when he died? That's a tough one. I, I didn't give out points for the last question. Either. Give, give yourself 5,000 points if you got the 5,000 or the five, the five stones. Oh, Marlo Floor has the right answer. Uh, Bill Faber was close. Michelle Fox at 150. No, very old. Karen Brown said. Uh, really old. 975, 820. So that's a little too high or a little too low. Um, the answer, the correct answer is 969. 969 is what's recorded in Genesis chapter 5, verse 27. And that, if you got that right, give yourself 969,000 points. And then Woo Pastor Vince, you got them all right, and you total them up, and you get? <laughs> I wasn't keeping track. Oh, okay. Well, it's all right, because the points don't matter. All right, so that is the end of trivia tonight. Good job. Those were some tough ones in there. Um, throwing some numbers at you. So you didn't have any uh, trick questions tonight, then, my understanding. Just the ones that tricked my, me. Okay. Yes. All right. You good? Yeah, I was just looking up Methuselah there because I'm... Um, Catching well, up to him? Well, I don't want to, no, <laughs> no, but I, I, I you know, I, I remember years ago when I did a study on it, and I laid it, I put down all the different lives, and like, who who was a lot like, when you realize with Adam or something like that, like, I remember he, his, his great, he was still alive to see his like, great, 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 you know, that kind of thing. But Methuselah... <laughs> I remember something with, with that <clears throat> his name kind of meant at, at death and then it will come and I think it was almost right. that he would die just prior to the come. flood right. whatever right. You know. right. so <clears throat> it's interesting anyhow hey you know his friends used to say you snooze you Methuselah <laughs> you, say, you, stu you sh yeah <laughs> you snooze you Methuselah something like that oh, we're getting a little bit off track here are we losing uh -huh. people Let's see. Anyhow. Numbers are plummeting. <laughs> you start the Bible study. But um, I uh, I don't know if my buddy Chris Gregus is on here, but I'm going to give him another little plug. My buddy Chris wrote this little book, The Healing Power of Gratitude, and um, we've been looking at, like, it kind of inspired me to do a little bit this study we've been doing on just that, gratitude. And some of his thoughts are kind of springboarding off of um, and so, I, uh, if, if, if you ever wanted to pick up a nice little book that's The Healing Power of Gratitude, I get no commission. Chris has been my friend for 40 years from college on through uh, pastoral ministry. Did want to let you know we have our daily breads. We have the, the large ones uh, have come into the office for July, August, September. So we have them if, if you're looking for them. Um, I want to continue tonight with that thought, though, the healing power of gratitude. Hey, if you're feeling down, worn out, don't, don't, don't leave. <laughs> because I really think the, the Lord wants to encourage you. Remember when we began this study, we, we looked at that verse in Ephesians 1 and verse 3. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. If we believe that, if I believe that's true, if I really believe, that I have already been blessed with every spiritual blessing. That I'm already seated in the heavenlies. That it's all, it, 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 it has to impact my ability to be grateful in every situation. To find that healing, beautiful, deep joy in the midst of whatever I'm going through. And uh, tonight we want to reflect on that, right? I remember watching the movie... Um, Sixth Sense. I forget how long ago it came out. Um, Bruce Willis. Don't give away the ending. No, we don't. Yeah, don't give away the ending. You know, we've given you 15 years to see it. If you haven't, I remember once I I forget what movie it was. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, 
And I, I shared it in the sermon. And somebody literally was disappointed. Pastor, I haven't seen that yet. And I was like, it's been out for two years. You can't blame me for giving the ending two years later. Anyhow, in Sixth Sense, I didn't know the ending. And the movie's about a psychiatrist, counselor, Bruce Willis, who's dealing with this young boy who sees and talks to dead people. As a side story is his own relationship with his wife that obviously somewhere has just fallen upon hard times and often during the movie he comes home and she may be sitting there, he'll sit down next to her, they'll kind of say, look, we need to talk, she won't even look at him. Sometimes he'll be like, we, we, come on, we need, to, we need to talk. She'll literally get up and walk away. I maybe was a little slower than others because I didn't realize it until the very end that he actually himself wasn't there. He was dead, and now I'm giving away the ending. You know, uh, he, he, I know, but he, he really wasn't there. That he was the, the reason the kid could talk to him is because kid, kid could talk to dead people. And but during the movie, I didn't know it. And there were times I was literally like, "Come on." Like your husband wants to talk to you, what do you, please just talk. You know, it was tearing me up inside, like kind of, you know, being somebody who likes to talk things through, right? <laughs> hey, you'll, you're never, if you're a child of God, that it's, it's never going to be that way on his end. Mm -hmm. There's never a time that you're going to say, Lord, I, I want you to talk to me. And he won't speak to you. Now, if you are asking him to show you something specific about a specific thing in your life, you may not, you know, get that answer shouted through the clouds. But the wonderful thing that I am so grateful for tonight, I am grateful that God is always talking to me. He's always talking to me. Uh, over the last few weeks, on plenty of the Sunday mornings, I, you know, when we were talking about the evidences for a reasonable faith in God, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, literally says that creation is, is uttering forth speech. But certainly the speech we're talking about is much more personal and much more powerful even than creation, right? It's there, if you open up in your Bible, to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And these verses aren't just verses to memorize, you know, as, as like the pack of 20 Christian verses you should memorize. And they're, they're not just doctrinal. They're personal verses if you really believe them. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 14 and following, right? Because if you really believe them, then you will realize that the word of God is soul-saving. It's crisis-comforting. It's doubt-affirming. It's life-guiding. It's all of those things. Paul says to Timothy in, in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verse 14, You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man, the woman of God, may be adequate, equipped for every good work. What's he saying there? When you open up scripture, God talks and he's teaching you. God talks and he's reproving you. He's challenging you. God talks, he's correcting you. God talks and he's training you. God is talking. Long before the internet, uh, when I was a new believer as a, as a teenager, um, somebody gave me this little pamphlet that, that I, I remember in, in my first Bible, I, glued, I kind of taped it to inside the back cover. It was, one, it was a little plant pamphlet, literally like a couple inches, two inches by three inches, but it was all folded up and it was, it was like, I forget what it said, it, you know, read this scripture when you feel this way. I think it was put out by American Bible Society. It might have been the Navigators. But you would open it up, and as you unfolded it all, it was this, you know, 
it was, it was a page that was bigger than my whole Bible. But it would be like, when you feel guilty, read these verses. When you feel lonely, read these verses. When you feel afraid, read these verses. When you feel discouraged, right? When you feel rejected. Oh, it was so meaningful to me because I didn't know a lot about the Bible. And, you know, but I would open that up and, you know, how am I feeling right now? Oh, okay, I'm going to read these verses, right? And, and basically it kind of saying, let God talk to you with whatever you're going through right now. It's, you ever just stop and think about that with Scripture? Like, look at Psalm 3. Uh, some of the Psalms are neat because they tell us, you know, exactly if you're feeling this way, hey, this will be a good Psalm for you, Right? It, it, Psalm 3, the very the title, right below, if you look at Psalm 3, it says, A Psalm of David, when he fled from Absalom, his son. So, we're, we're given the context of it, right? David's telling us, I wrote this when I was running for my life. And do you sit and picture, ah, picture David, wherever he is, sitting in a cave, whatever, wherever he's, and he's saying, I... Oh, Lord, how my adversaries have increased. And that's, you know, he, he, we sang this Sunday night, but thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. He talks about I was able to lay down and sleep, right, because of, of what the Lord does. And what a psalm. There it tells you right there. And just picture it. David is on the run for his life. And this is how God spoke to him. Uh, you look at the Psalm 18. In Psalm 18, we get another one of those in the title there. Psalm 18, right there in the title, we read, For the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this psalm in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he starts, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. Here's a, here's a it's like, what to read when God has brought you the victory, when you've come through, right? To, to look at these people, to, to, to look at the scripture and say, let God talk to me the way he did to them in that moment. Think about Job, right? You know, when, when, when you are at that point of, Lord, it was like one thing after another. Whatever your one thing after another is, in all likelihood, it, it, it doesn't match the intensity of Job's. I mean, Job's one thing after another was, is, it was intense. I mean, just losing everything and, and physically aching, weary, in pain in that moment, right? Lord, speak to me. And God says, what to Job? Okay, Job, remember when you asked me that, where were you when I did this and I did this and I did this? Remember when you ask me that I don't have to answer you. Make sure you come to me that way. Don't come to me. Lord, you better come to me. Lord, I know that you know so much more than me. Let God talk to you through Job's pain. Think about Mary when the angel tells her, Mary, your life is about to get flipped upside down. Whew, behold the bondservant of the Lord. Think about Joseph when the angel says, Joseph, don't divorce your wife. She's telling you the truth. It really is a, a child that God's put in her. Whew, wow. His response. The shepherds, when the angels come. Real people, right? Just as the Lord spoke to them, right? In that moment. And of course, God's word culminates for us in Jesus. The writer to the Hebrews tells us that in Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature. He upholds all things but what, what is there in verse 2, right? God has spoken through the prophets, and now what? In these last days, he's spoken through his son. And so many times that I have found myself restless or confused or distracted, and 
I personally, in some of those moments, I just go right to Matthew chapter 5. And I go to the hillside, and by the, I thank the Lord, I had the opportunity to be in Israel one time when I was sick and I didn't get a lot out of it. But one time when it was nice weather, and I remember when the, you know, when they took us to perhaps the hillside where Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, and the, the guy went, I just, the whole group, they took the group, and off they went to see something else, and they're walking over there. I sat down in the grass. That's, for me, I sat down in the grass, put my hand, this, not the very same grass, but this is the place perhaps, right? And I just sat there and I listened to Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn over their sin, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called, you know, the sons of God. And I can't tell you how many times when I've been distracted, knocked off my game, you know, where I just have, quote unquote, sat in the grass and just let Jesus talk to me. See, I could say, Jesus, you need to tell me what you're going to do with that person. Those are the specifics, right? Or I can sit there and listen to him talk. Vincent, blessed are the gentle. Blessed are those who show mercy. Right? And just let him talk to me. That's the key, right? Let him talk and the Holy Spirit will use that truth, right? John chapter 16, we read there in verse 13. Um, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come, right? That the Holy Spirit in us, Spirit of God, magnify the word. Now, you can't say, Holy Spirit, talk to me, and then you come back to me and say, uh, the Holy Spirit told me, Pastor Vince, that uh, the church, the age of the church is over, and nobody should be going to church anymore. I would say to you, that's not the Holy Spirit, because that goes against the Word of God. The Holy Spirit's only going to say what is in line with what the Father and the Son have declared, right? But the beauty of God talking to us, that's why we sing that hymn. He walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I am his own. But the important thing is what? We need to listen. What did Jesus say in John chapter 10? In John 10 and verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. What's it saying? It's saying, you don't just hear what he's saying. You follow. Listen. Listen to what he's saying. There could be times where I found myself going to the Lord because of, you know, Lord, this mistreatment. And when I listen to him, I realize what he's saying to me is, yeah, Vince, I, I allowed that because you're doing the same thing to this person over here. And so I allowed you to experience this mistreatment because I wanted you to listen to me and hear me and humble yourself and see that, you were mistreating somebody else over there, right? Listen to him. Because if we do, it leads us to a second thing that, uh, that I, allows us to be grateful, and that is God disciplines us. God talks to us, but because he talks to us, he has the right to discipline us if we don't listen. Now, Pastor Greg did a great job with the passage in, in Hebrews 12. I mean, I'll turn to it again, but when, when he uh, spoke, was, was going all through been going all through Hebrews, I mean, just a tremendous job uh, reminding us of, of, of the beauty of that, right? In Hebrews 12 and verse 5 and 6, right? Uh, don't forget that exhortation. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. And so 
I'm grateful that God disciplines me. Because it means he talks to me, he tells me what I'm supposed to be doing, and if I'm not listening and I'm not following, he's going to love me enough to get my attention. Mm -hmm. now, the book of Jonah is not this ooh, disappointing book in the Old Testament. It reveals the incredible love of God, first off, to the people of Nineveh. You talk about mercy and grace, and when you find yourself saying, I don't know if God could forgive me, read a little bit about some of the horrific things the Ninevites did, and God forgave them. But it's a beautiful picture of God with Jonah. Jonah, you're not listening to me. I'm not going to let you die in the ocean. I'm going to discipline you, right? It's, it's how God works. Beautiful uh, word picture there in, in um, Psalm 30. In Psalm 30, um, when we're reading about that, as that, that beautiful aspect of the Lord, and again, in the title, we, we David tells us it's a song at the dedication of the of the house, right? But in Psalm thirty, and you may this may be a, a meaningful verse to you. It is to a lot of people. For his anger is but for a moment; his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. It's a beautiful word picture. God never loses his temper. But what we're being told is. This controlled anger of God when we disobey him. It comes in a moment. And, and, and the, the, the word that they're getting there, the picture, the word that's used behind this, you know, weeping may last for the night, is, is the word, a phrase that they would use when they had a, a guest for one night. That God's, that, that kind of anger that we're, we're hearing about, that discipline of God comes as a guest to us. And his intent is just for a brief time. The, the, the weeping may last for the night, but the shout of joy comes in the morning. And the morning is whenever we decide to come to respond to his discipline, right? So that, that, that discipline he may bring to us in the moment is meant to turn us back. Now, again, as, as Pastor Greg had shared, there may be results that come about if, if, I, if I walk away from the Lord and, and go into a crime spree, uh, the Lord's discipline may bring me back to him while I'm sitting in jail still, right, for, for that. But the beauty of what I'm getting at in the words is, is that, that, that it's only, he, he, it, it, the beauty of, he loves me so much and it comes for a moment so that joy may come in the morning. One of my favorite uh, parts of that goofy movie that some of you may hate, but uh, Christmas Vacation with uh, Chevy Chase and um, when they're standing there looking at their lights and all of a sudden he's, he's like greeting everyone and all of a sudden he turns and he says something to his cousin Eddie and he says, Cousin Eddie, how, you know, where did you come from, right? And uh, later, the cousin Eddie's got his kind of beat up old RV in the driveway and and Clark says something about like, oh wow, look at that! And he, cousin Eddie says, "Don't get, don't get your eyes on that, there, Clark. <laughs> I'm going to be taking that with us when we leave next month." And you see Clark go, "Next month, right? What? Ah! Oh. Listen, no matter what you've been taught or shaped, God's discipline is not is not a season of penance that you have to. You know, in other words, you have to suffer now." Again, there may be ramifications, there may be just real results of your sin, but the beauty of God is this. He loves me so much, he disciplines me. The moment I turn back to him is a moment that he doesn't say, nah, I'm not ready for you to turn back to me. Nah, too soon, you need to be punished longer. The moment I turn to him, the weeping lasted for that moment, but now a shout of joy can come. Mm -hmm. That's how God's discipline works in our lives. And I thank God for it. I thank God. Jesus says, all of you that are weak and heavy laden, come unto me, right? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, God, thank you, God, that you're a God who talks to me anytime. You're talking all the time. Anytime I'm discouraged or lonely or afraid or doubtful, whatever it may be, I can turn to his word and he's talking to me. Mm. 
And any time that I've stopped listening to him and I've gone astray, he loves me enough that he's going to discipline me for one purpose, to turn me back, to turn me back into fellowship with him. What a great God. Father, I thank you. Thank you, oh God. Oh, turn our hearts to gratitude. Heal us, Lord, from our grumbling and our you know, bitterness or whatever it may be. And remind us all that we have to be grateful for. We have a God who talks to us. We have a God who disciplines us because we have a God who loves us. Thank you, Father. In this moment, in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. He's a good, good God, right? Yeah. Right. Well, good work, brother. well, appreciate that you folks sticking with us uh, through the sharing of Scripture. We uh, want to move, Cousin Eddie, there it is. Maybe some other person, somebody else, you know, enjoys that one. Yeah, um, but, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Curtis, I didn't know, I gave you whatever, 15 years to watch The Sixth Sense, you know, he's, <laughs> he, 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 was, he was going to watch it this weekend, probably. You know. But um, this is a time for us to be praying. And um, I sent out a letter to the church. If you didn't get that letter, it may be that we don't have you on our mailing list. Now, you may be on our email list, but not on our mailing list. If that's the case, let us know. Reach out to us, say, hey, I'm not, I didn't get the letter. But in the letter, just mention some things to be praying for our church about. But we encourage you here, uh, share some prayer requests with us uh, right now. Uh, let people know what we can be praying for. We've got some updates. I'll give you the first one. Christine Entwistle. We've been praying for her for a while. Uh, when A while back, you know, when she fell and, and damaged her neck and had surgery and you know, it's been a long journey. They did an injection to try to block the nerves so that it would relieve the pain she has in her neck and her arms and her hands. The results so far have not been significant. So just be praying. Ask the Lord to, mm -hmm. you know, bring about a solution um, for Chris uh, uh, for, for, to relieve the pain or, or some sort of pain management. Uh, Laura LaFleur, we're praising the Lord with Laura because one of the things that they were testing for was an H. pylori infection, and that came back negative, and that's great news. Mm. So Laura's on here. We're praising God with her um, for that. You got a couple? Uh, Juliana Letirzo, Linda's mm -hmm. daughter, is having her surgery tomorrow uh, to remove the thyroid and the cancer that is there so I know that Juliana is apprehensive about that I'm sure Linda as her mom is too so pray for their peace lack of anxiety but also pray for the surgery tomorrow that it's successful um, if Juliana's having her surgery Mark Pancoast also tomorrow is having his radiation treatment on the the cancer that moved into the bone in his shoulder so Juliana's surgery and Mark Pancoast radiation treatment uh, are both tomorrow. Somebody was asking about Laura Bowman. Do you have an update there? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I don't. I think Laura Bowman would still be in. I, I, she may be near the end of her two weeks of quarantine, but I think she's still. I think we're still in that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Debbie or, would be on here or not. I, I haven't seen her, but you can let us know an update on that. Um, Danielle Warner. Right. Um, uh, uh, Joyce and Reg Baker's daughter, Danielle Baker, Danielle Warner, is in the hospital uh, sh with anemia. She's anemic, and so we're going to be praying that the Lord would uh, bring about a solution to that. Karen Brown was offered a praise. She got to see her dad on Father's Day. I know they were not able to see him for a while because he was in the... Um, uh, nursing home, they weren't letting them any, any visitors in, so yeah, she's praying the Lord for that. Uh, Beth Ferraro had a prayer request. One of her relatives, uh, her grandson's name is Carter. He's one years old, apparently is having a problem with his bowel and infection, and he may have to go into the hospital for surgery. So we're going to pray for little Carter. Uh, I think the other little girl we were praying for. 
We've been praying for Brooke, Brooke Nielsen, which her surgery is still scheduled to the end of July. But as we said, we're not just praying for the surgery. We're praying every day that the Lord would prevent a seizure up to the surgery. Uh, Linda, jo oh, Jody uh, had another chest x-ray um, on Monday uh, and waiting for the results. So we just want to keep praying. That's been a long, a long, uh, yeah, a long journey for, for dear Jody, and uh, our sparkly friend. And we 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 miss seeing you, and uh, certainly been praying along for that. And, and Linda Latier is always at the same time that her daughter is battling with cancer. Linda has been battling with breast cancer, mm -hmm. and she's going to go in next week to remove some more tissue and then start chemo in August. So continue to pray for Linda. Her faith has been encouraging to me, and her trust that the Lord's going to see her through this. Um, I didn't have any other updates. Did you have any others? That no, you just uh, there were some, some unspoken requests sometimes that oh, people yeah, don't right. want I'm to sorry. mention. Sorry, sorry, Vince. Um, <laughs> no, and uh, just I, I would have you be praying. Greg won't mention it, but I'd have you be praying um, his daughter Hannah's wedding. You, some of you. Uh, uh, know Mike Mullen. Some of you see Mike Mullen's name on here. His daughter is getting married, and but just found out that her her wedding plans uh, for the end of July have now kind of been forced to to shift. And uh, boy, it's happened to so many who have put so much time into wedding plans, only to have mm -hmm. the virus uh, just throw it all throw it out in the left field. Be praying for Greg and for his, his precious daughter Hannah. Uh, she's getting her and Parker are getting married Friday night. Was that August seventh? Mm -hmm. Correct. And I, you, I, poor, he's hanging in. Oh, he's just, just hoping. You know, right now the, the, it's all still set. But you know, you just you just I just pray that the I mean, you know that the Lord would let that continue through in His plan, right? Mm -hmm. Jackie uh, De Silva. First of all, thank you, Jackie, for your delicious ice cream cake that you brought into us, keeping your pastors uh, healthy and, and fat. <laughs> um, but she's praising the Lord. She does not need knee surgery. I know she was concerned about that. Your buddy Chris Gregg is there. Yeah. He's uh, having his gallbladder out next week. So we'll pray for you, Chris. Chris, the amazing thing about Chris, uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, Chris. I see Chris on here. Um, and... Uh, Chris is a pastor down by the seashore, so I appreciate you being joining in on our uh, Facebook Live. I remember, and again, I forgot how many years ago now. Huh? Do you remember, like 10, 15 wow. years yeah. ago? Chris, I visited Chris, and he was, we didn't think he was going to make it. He, had, he was in a coma. It is, is uh, uh, just, just uh, uh, you know, intestines, you know, that was, were just in, in the surgery he had, and it didn't it hadn't gone well, and just I remember praying over him, and he wasn't conscious, and I remember saying, "Lord, phew, you know, give my buddy some more days." And so I praise the Lord that he had eight years ago. Thanks, Chris. I praise the Lord that God brought him back, and what, what you know, and uh, I just thank God for that. And uh, so be praying for Chris because he's going in uh, to have his gallbladder next Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, and so we appreciate your prayers there. All right. And uh, the Macquarie's did sell their house. We were praying for that last week, so praise the Lord. They, mm -hmm. they sold their house, and it looks like they're going to be moving on the July 18th, and they were asking if anybody is able to help with that. There's a message up on the on the other Facebook page if you want to respond to that. We would encourage you to do that. All right, let's, uh, let's go yeah. to the Lord in, in prayer. Lord, I know you've overheard, and Lord, I just thank you so much for your love, for your grace, and for your discipline. Lord, how you, um, you don't let the ones that you love out of your care. And Lord, that you constantly are speaking and drawing us to yourself. Thank you, Lord, for your word and its consistency and the faithfulness that you have to speak to us. Lord, help us to know your voice. And Lord, that we become so familiar with it, Lord, that it, it's just natural to hear your voice speak mm -hmm. to us through your word. Lord, thank you for... The folks who have praises, Lord, I thank you that Karen got to see her dad. I thank you that the Macquarie sold their house. Thank you and praise you, Lord, for uh, Laura LaFleur's uh, negative test results. Thank you, Lord, for all of the ways that you answer our prayers, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that the, 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 the things
thing that we pray most is, is for your presence, that you would just be there. Lord, you don't always take away the things that we would desire to be removed, but you promise to, to be present with us in the middle of that. So I just pray, Lord, that your presence would be felt and known by those who need it. Lord, I, I pray for uh, Juliana. She goes in for surgery tomorrow. It's a scary thing for a young girl to mm. face mm. cancer, Lord. So I just pray that you calm her heart, calm her mom's heart, her dad. I just pray for the surgeons that they can give them uh, the skill that you uh, that they can take out what needs to be removed and, and not do any other harm. Lord, I just pray for her recovery and for her heart. Lord, I just pray also for uh, Danielle, who's in the hospital. I pray for uh, Reggie Joyce that she would again. Uh, it, it's so much harder to see someone that you love, your child, in the hospital than it is to go in on your own. So I just pray for their comfort, and I mm -hmm. pray that they find an answer to the, the anemia or the problem that's there. Pray for our brother Mark, Lord, as he has his treatment tomorrow, Lord, that, uh, again, you give him uh, your presence and your touch, and, Lord, that you would bring healing into his, his shoulder, Lord, and that you would use this treatment of radiation to, to get rid of the cancer that's there, Lord. Lord, thank you for uh, Chris Entwistle and, and for the faithfulness that she's shown to, to the body here, to, to others. I just pray, Lord, that this injection, Lord, would, would cause this pain to decrease, that she would have comfort and rest, and that she would um, just have a limit to her pain, Lord. I just pray that you give her the grace that she needs, Lord, that it would be sufficient for her today. Mm -hmm. Lord, for those unspoken requests that are there, Lord, you know what's on the hearts and minds of those who are praying, Lord, I just pray that you would speak to their hearts and let them know that you care and that you will answer. Lord, I pray for those who uh, are getting married, Lord, to Hannah, as well as, as others, Lord, that you would just find a way for it to happen, Lord. If it has to be smaller, Lord, let it be smaller. I just pray, Lord, really against this COVID, Lord, I pray that it would, it would go away, Lord, that you bring healing, you bring answers, that you bring, you bring treatment, a cure, and Lord, that we would stop having to, to be locked down I pray for our leaders as they make these decisions, Lord. I know it's not always easy, but it's not always popular. I just pray that uh, you, you would give them the grace and the wisdom to make decisions that are that are based on facts and, and not on fear. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray for our country Lord, I, as, as we celebrate our independence. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, and thank you that we still live in a country where we have the freedom to practice our, our faith, to meet, Lord, well, to at least meet online. Lord, I pray for today, Lord, and I hope it's soon, Lord, where we can open the doors of the church again and, and, and worship together corporately. I pray for the work that's being done in our building, Lord. I thank you for all the volunteers who have been there. Lord, I thank you for the, the many hours that so many have put in. They did it, they do it not for recognition, but for your for your name and for your ministry and to serve us. I just thank you for the work and I just pray that it would come to completion soon, Lord. And just thank you that uh, the faithful giving of our members that have allowed us to do these upgrades and to make the, the church a place that um, is safe and secure and, and a nice place to be. Lord, I, I always try to remember, Lord, our first responders, those who are out there, Lord, on the front line. I just pray you protect them, not only from COVID, but from all harm. Lord, I pray for our country, the fracture, the, the, the inequality, the racism, the hatred that exists in the hearts of, of men. Lord, you're the only cure for that, Lord. We can't legislate that. We can't bring healing we can't bring forgiveness and reconciliation apart from you. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you would bring reconciliation to the hearts of men. Lord, that can't come without your presence in their hearts. So I just mm -hmm. pray for salvation. I pray for a great ingathering, Lord, of, of those who would come to know you. And, and that also you would gather your church because you also say, Lord, that one day you will return for your church. I pray that that day would hasten, Lord, you'd come quickly. And until that day comes, Lord, that you give us the grace we, we need to live each day. And that we are not overcome by evil, but that we would overcome evil with good. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we appreciate you being with us and, and hanging on. And we uh, just want you to know that we, we love you. And we had a great gathering again last Sunday night out in the parking lot. Very meaningful. And I appreciate it so much. Many of you came, and even though like it was possible thunderstorms or whatever, mm -hmm. but what a great time. Um, this coming weekend, uh, we won't be having a Sunday night gathering because it's 4th of July weekend. Our plan is to have another, our third, you know, hello gathering out in the parking lot on Sunday night, the 12th. We'll continue live streaming our morning worship. We'll continue being here for a while. 
And uh, but we love you. Say goodbye to each other. <laughs> Have a great night. And uh, <laughs> the Lord, the Lord's with you. Good night, everybody. Good night.